gonorrhea, chlamydia, strep throat, UTIs, H. pylori. The list goes on of serious diseases and infections that antibiotics are used to be treated. And there are two big problems with this. First, these diseases are mutating and overpowering our antibiotics. Second, antibiotics are becoming harsher and harsher on the body. Do we suffer and only rely on powerful medication? Well, introducing LL37, a natural antimicrobial peptide that has the potential to serve as an alternative to antibiotics and play a vital role in our innate and adaptive immunity. Since the discovery of this peptide, many peptide researchers are starting to have a different perspective when it comes to our immune system and overall how we approach treating diseases. Let's take a deep dive into LL37 where I'll be sharing all my research and discoveries on this amazing compound. Before I get into this video, I must have a disclaimer. This video is for purely educational and entertainment reasons. I'm not a doctor, so any health concerns or questions you may have, please seek out a licensed professional. Do not consult this video. By watching this video, you agree to the disclaimer. Let's get straight into this video. So what is LL37? LL37 is a peptide that's naturally found in the body and is classified under, I'm gonna read this to you, and I may say it wrong, cathlicidin, cathlicidin. So please correct me if I'm saying it wrong, but it's a peptide that belongs to AMPS, which is antimicrobial peptides. And it's mainly produced by white blood cells like macrophils and neutrophils, which are important for the immune system. And researchers are seeing and thinking that LL37 could be a potential alternative to antibiotics or just to help, which that is very exciting in itself. So how does LL37 work? Well, it's found naturally in the body and it's produced by the immune system to fight off infection and inflammatory diseases. And interesting, LL37 is seen in high concentrations when the body is fighting off an infection or disease. And originally people thought that LL37 was dangerous because of this, but it's actually the opposite, that your body's producing that to protect you. So it's like when you have a fever and you get hotter, the fever is actually what kills off the bad things. So it's a positive response to an infection or a disease. And when LL37 is activated, it can go to these bad cells and poke holes in their cell membranes, resulting in cell death. So you can see it's pretty powerful. And additionally, LL37 is seen in higher concentrations, especially when it comes to different lung diseases or lung infections which is oftentimes why LL37 is potentially being used in different lung conditions. Additionally, research has shown that LL37 can specifically help with lung and skin cells, which is why there's research in using LL37 in different lung diseases. To summarize it, LL37 is simulated by the immune system when there's an infection or disease, especially with the lung and skin conditions. And then when it is stimulated, it goes to cells, it pokes holes in the cell membranes that result in cell death. So what are the research benefits? It can help fight off and prevent different lung infections. It can protect against gut inflammation and gut infections. It can help signaling for the immune system to help call other immune cells. It can reduce inflammation. It can accelerate wound healing and bone formation. So what are the research side effects of LL37? As you're gonna learn, this peptide ha can have more side effects. The first is actually causing more inflammation or more damage because when LL37 is activated, it goes to cells and kills the cell membrane by poking holes. And this has been shown to sometimes happen in healthy cells, especially when there is no need for LL37, which is why I say this often on this channel. I believe peptides are best used when the body actually has a reason to use the peptide. So what are the research, dosing, and cycling? From what I've seen, it's seen about 100 micrograms per injection and it can be taken twice a day. It's largely dependent on the researcher's condition and response. And then for cycling, I've seen anywhere from four to six weeks. Again, very dependent on the response. And this is very similar to thymosin alpha-1 and this many peptides. If the researcher has a goal and they use LL37 and the goal is not met, then potentially a longer cycle or a higher dose is needed. But especially with this peptide, it's important to monitor with blood testing or different markers to making sure more damage is not being done or to make sure that LL37 is actually being effective. So what are some other peptides I would take with LL37? First would be thymosin alpha-1, BPC-157, and as well TB500. 
I think these are amazing healing peptides and additionally GHAKU. I mean, there's more I'm gonna add on, but all these peptides are very commonly used together, especially thymosin alpha one, very important for the immune system. But then I threw in BPC-157 and TB-500 and GHKKU because these have a lot of internal healing benefits. And that's one thing you may start seeing a lot now is that GHKKU is not only gonna be a copper peptide for cosmetics, will actually begin to be seen to have a lot of effects when it comes to internal health, especially healing the body. Next peptide I would throw in there would be KPV, another amazing healing peptide. And I love this peptide because I've seen it in cream form, nasal form, injecting form. Next would be ARA290. It's especially useful for nerve regeneration or diabetics I've seen. And another peptide could be Humanin or VIP. Again, another healing peptide depending on the specific condition. But the main ones I would really focus on would be Thymosin Alpha 1, TB500, BPC157, and GHKCU. Here are some supplements I would take with LL37. And I'm thinking, I'm trying to heal my body and help my immune system. First would be some kind of mushroom mix. I'm a big fan of different mushrooms as they can be very therapeutic. Next would be glutathione with NAD. Some of my favorite supplements is for general anti-aging and immune system health. Next would be resveratols, which I may be saying that wrong, but it's a group of antioxidants. My favorite form is actually in liposomal form, but very powerful for helping the immune system and having more antioxidants. Next will be methylene blue, which is actually a new supplement I've been really enjoying, but methylene blue is very powerful for fighting off different things and just helping heal the body. Here are some lifestyle tools I would add to LL37. And again, my main idea of why I'd be using LL37 is for more immunity and to help fight off something. First, be fasting, especially prolonged fasting, especially two, three or four or five days can be very beneficial. Next would be functional nutrition, functional exercise, the foundations. Next would be infrared sauna, especially longer infrared saunas can be amazing at detoxing the body. Next would be lymphatic massages. I'm a big fan of lymphatic massages, especially for the immune system. And some others I want to throw in there. I don't want to get this too long guys, but you can see there's a lot of cool lifestyle factors. Acupuncture, big fan of acupuncture for helping with the immune system and sleeping. HBOT, hyperetheric oxygen therapy, amazing for many different things for healing the body. Also something new I've been playing around with is halo therapy or salt therapy, especially combined with infrared sauna, like inhaling salt particles, especially amazing for the lungs and as well mud therapy, which is probably strange to you, but mud can be an amazing way to fight off different things. These are all different things to look into, but I think they're all very exciting and they're also pretty fun in my opinion. So what are the pros of LL37? The first pro is that it's a powerful peptide that can be very beneficial for the immune system and different infections. The second pro is that I like how it's, there's research to potentially serve as an antibiotic. So that is a super cool seeing how we are looking to alternatives to that. One of the biggest cons of LL37 is that it's a powerful peptide. It can also affect healthy cells and actually cause the opposite effect. So it is so important to always you know, be testing, looking at biomarkers and not overdoing it. So what is my overall opinion of LL37? Overall, it's a very powerful peptide and I think there's a lot of potential for it, especially in some severe cases or immune cases. And there's still a lot of research to be done, you know, when it comes to different conditions, when it comes to the dosing, cycling, all of that. But I do like how it's found naturally in the body and that it's just something that potentially can be used instead of antibiotics. And I still think there's time and place for antibiotics, but if we have other tools and things that we can use before going to more intense things, I think it's such a win. So overall, I think way more research needs to be done on this, but I just think it's cool that we're discovering this and that we're looking into it because this could dramatically change the field of immune health, treatments, cancer, so many different things. So that is my overall opinion on it. I still have a lot more research to do. But anyways, if you want to master peptides and just become your best self, I recommend two things and also support this channel. Look at my academy, Regenerative Academy, where I'm building an amazing community of everything peptides and more just to live the best life. Or check out my book, Peptides Made Simple. I put so much energy into it and I know we're gonna love both of them. So if you wanna support me and just learn some amazing information, please check those out. But have an amazing day. Please like and subscribe. Share this video with anyone you think might benefit from it and I'll see you around.